Tom. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much. It's a privilege and an honor to be here, to come and share. Um, it's an amazing season. It's an amazing time. And it's a time where we need to really rise up and get rid of our religion, our boxes, our own doctrines, our imaginations, own imaginations. And it's a time to rise up in January, first week of January, the Lord said, it and I want you are radical, but I want you to be more radical, a thousand times more radical. Are you prepared to do it? And obviously I said, yes, Lord. And he said, but just remember as well, the persecution will be a thousand times more radical as well. And that is a decision that we as sons of God will have to make right now. There are no more times to play church, to play Jesus, to be religious. It's about the manifestation of Jesus Christ. We're in 223. It is a revelation of Jesus. And if we look at the earth currently, we on a daily basis see how the fall of the world is taking place daily. You literally see the change, especially in the spirit, daily. So God is calling a remnant of sons that will rise up now in power and authority like never before. The earth will, would not have seen a dimension of the revelation of Jesus that's going to take place as from this year. I'm talking about walking in the streets transfigured, being transported, translated. It's going to be where the sun is going to speak something in front of people in the streets, and it's going to come into existence. It's going to manifest. But God is looking for the radical ones. It's time that we stop looking in the natural. It's all about being in the spirit. That is your origin. It's from a spiritual dimension. You're not a natural being, your, your place of living, your place of existence, your place of dwelling, your throne is in the spirit. And that's it. So the word that the Lord gave me for this year and for the season and times, Isaiah 60, everybody knows it. Arise, and I'm reading from the Amplified, from the depression and frustration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Arise means to take up your position of authority and rulership on the throne. So what happens now? Instead of living a lifestyle where we want to go to heaven, you are in heaven. I don't know where these religious lot come around and say, let's ascend. Where you ascending to? Because you already ascended. You're in Christ on the throne. Mm -hmm. So we need to get our language right as well. Because we're framing things above us and above people that we're putting them in bondage. So arise, take up your position of authority. God gave it to you in Genesis 1 and said, you go and rule, you go and multiply, you go and bear fruit, you fill the earth. Finished. With what? The whole earth will be filled with glory. We are the glory releasers, revelators here on the earth. We're the ones to activate the glory of the Lord here on the earth. And it can only be activated when the earth responds to you. When the earth acknowledges you as a king and a priest and the order of Melchizedek, when the earth hears your sound frequency and vibration and realizes that, wow, for example, yes, George, son of God, king from God, appointed to rule over the earth. So the earth immediately responds. That's why the earth is growing, crying out for the sons of God to rise up because they are not revealing God. They have not taken up their positions as kings. So they can't acknowledge them as kings. Rise up from your position and shine. It means to be radiant with the glory of God. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When you got saved, reborn, born from above, it means that light has been activated in you. What does it mean? It's like a switch of a light that came on that what you had before you in the mother's womb, Jeremiah, um, 
1 verse 4 to 5, before you in the mother's womb, I knew you, I ordained you, I have chosen you, I have set you apart. So what happens when you rise up, stepping into your salvation, being a son of God, everything that was declared upon you before you and the mother's womb are, were activated then. Be the light, for your light has come. What happens now? What you engage, what you behold with your eyes, what you touch, you become. So if you are in Christ and he's the light of the world, what are you then? You see, we became so religious. God is my light and he must come. But you are the light because you in him. We need to change our mindsets, our way of thinking. And what is amazing is all facets of the character and the nature of Jesus Christ is in the word light. All facets of God is in the world light his nature his character his authority his wisdom his life his love because that is who is that light means if you go in the hebrew and the greek it means life and lightning so what is god he's a life giving spirit and god declared it upon you and me we are life giving spirits Everything about God's in you. Why do we ask him to come and do everything if he instructed you? You see, we became religious. In Ephesians 1 verse 18 and 19, we all know that's going to fill the eyes of my heart with love. It means enlighten my heart. So that everything that are on my scrolls of heaven gets revealed. Enlighten my heart. What? Because you are birthed, you are born out of the womb of the Father, the heart of the Father. So enlighten my heart because when you are born, born from above and saved, your heart and the Father's heart become one. What does it say? Nothing are hidden to the sons of God. So when the heart is enlightened, it means everything of the spiritual realm gets unlocked. Everything of creation, because nothing are hidden. Okay. Light, listen to this. We all talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. Science has shown we all know it if you just read your Bible. That blood is decompressed light. Blood is decompressed light. Adam and Eve were light. Then they sinned. They became flesh and they become blood. Then Jesus came and he gave his blood to us and for us. Then it says um, in Corinthians, clothe yourself with Jesus Christ. Clothe yourself with light. Now, in the blood of Jesus is his DNA. So when you come in unity with Christ, you step back in your heavenly dimension, spiritual dimension, where he says you are seated in Hebrew, on Mount Zion, in the new Jerusalem, on your throne. So it means you're stepping back at being a light-giving spirit. You become light. So your blood becomes light again. It becomes compressed because that's who God is. He's the fullness and the perfection of light. Now, the DNA of God starts manifesting. What is interesting, interesting light travel in helical waves. It looks exactly as the same strand as DNA. Wow. What happens now? You are the one connecting heaven and earth because the strands of your DNA comes in alignment with the light of your heavenly dimension. 
It takes on the same character and nature, power and authority and all of heaven as it, and the word comes as we pray, as it is in heaven, it becomes here on earth. So you bring your blood and the light of Christ, the DNA of Christ, and the light of the throne of God into union. And what happens now? Now the earth recognizes you. As king, the earth responds. It has to respond without you even saying a word because of you being the only ability you've got to become a light giving spirit is to be reunited with the Father. So, what happens now? You release a sound, a frequency, and a vibration that declares that you've been chosen, you've been set apart, you've been ordained, and you've been appointed to reveal Christ on earth, to fill the earth with glory, and to, to, to reunite all of creation back into God's original intent to praise and worship him. The earth could not resist you. Nothing in creation can resist you when you step into that I mentioned. It has to bow its knee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. Okay. It's a declaration of God towards you. When God declares something to you, it's a covenant. Yes. It's a covenant. Nothing less than a covenant. It said, glory will arise upon you. Now, let's shift our religion. When? You know. Foundation of the world. What do we say? What do we say? One day, I'm going to get to that glory. One day. Why not now? It's already given. Yes. You see, we're living a religious lifestyle. We created a processing God, a step one to ten God. I first have to do all these works to become it. But God said, I've given you that. So it's a belief thing. Do you believe it? Are you expectant where you are right now there to get transfigured? Are you expecting? Do you believe it? That's who you are. Because if you don't believe it and if you don't visualize it, you can't become it. A nation shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Listen what God tells you. It says in Isaiah 61, you've been called to the nations. And we prophesied so quickly to some people, and it's only for some. If you are king and all of creation is submitted under your authority, it means nations. So what does God say? When you become, when you take Ownership of what I declared upon you, nations, leaders, kings shall come to you. You become a magnet to all of creation. It comes to you. When you walk with God, blessings, favor, honor, abundance comes to you. You don't even have to ask for it. Mm. Not at all. It comes to you. Nations shall come to your light. Question to all. When people look at you, when you walk in the shops, when you drive in your car, do they acknowledge the light in you? Remember, wherever God moves, nothing stays the same. Everything gets activated. Every good thing gets transformed. But if you tell me you're in Christ, so things where you move, everything must be activated and transformed. There's that acknowledgement, but the reality is if you go into your food line or supermarkets, wherever, everybody is supposed to fall to the ground and start praising and looking. Even the food tins and the meat and the shelves and the roots, everything should start praising God. You see, but because we don't know whom we are and what declared, God declared upon our lives, we're not stepping at it. We need in the season to be intentional. 
to release God so that all of creation can acknowledge him. That is your one of your biggest things in the day when you walk, wherever you are in a restaurant, you're sitting there and you wonder and you release the presence of God that everybody has an encounter. That is spreading the gospel. It's not going to people and asking if they are saved. The gospel is not only that way. The gospel is just being in the presence of God and releasing his presence. So what happens? Wherever you move, the spirit man, even of the lost, acknowledges that sound and gets reminded of the one that they knew before they were in the mother's womb. We need to be intentional in the season. Lift up your eyes round about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you, your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried and nursed in their arms. Lift up your eyes. You see? Take up your authority. Look to the heavens. Look from the heavens. Don't look in the natural. Remember now, who rules in the natural? Darkness. So what are you going to look at? At lies. You're going to get fear. You're going to get doubt. You're going to lose hope. If you look at the world out there, it's in chaos. So what are you going to do? I need to see what the truth is in heaven. Heaven is the only place where it's perfect truth. I need to trust God. And the season, I get it more and more every day. I say, why don't you test me? Why don't you test me? Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged, because your abundant wealth of the dead trees shall be turned to you, into you shall the nations come with their treasures. What does he say? That everything of darkness shall be brought to you and brought into light. God gave us the ability and the privilege to take possession of all of creation. And that's all aspects of life. Everything that's in the world and of the world will be given to you to be transformed as it is in heaven. So the, today you, you'll tell me, yes, I'm a kingdom person. I'm all for the kingdom. And I'm going to do this for the kingdom and that to the kingdom. What is a kingdom person? As a person whose first intention is to bring everything as it is in heaven. Nothing else. Don't come and tell me, I'm going to build churches, and I'm going to build orphanages, and I'm a kingdom person, and I'm going to take the billions of the world, and I'm going to set up these structures. If it is not your first intention as it is in heaven, you're not a kingdom person. It's about yourself. That is what we've been instructing as it is in heaven. We even pray it. So in the season, to rise up and shine. It's an amazing season. I can carry on with that for, for years because rise up and shine is to become that fiery, burning one for God. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 as where Jeremiah declares, and I'm paraphrasing, that he said, I can't keep my mouth away from declaring the name of Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. There's fire in my bones. Why in the bones? If you take um, Ezekiel 37, the prophecy was into the bone because that is where the record and the destiny, the DNA of Christ are stored. The fire is in my bones, so it's in the record and the testimony of Yahweh. What is in his blood? What are in your bones? Scrolls. It's in the DNA of Christ, the scrolls of creation. That's what carry you there. So all of you carry the scrolls in your heart because this is the Holy of Holies. This is where you treasure all of creation. And then your bones are filled with all the scrolls of creation. Everything of existence into eternity. So you need to be a fiery one with a spinal. 1 Peter 2 verse 
um, five, he talks about you are a living stone. Some translations, there are other scriptures that declares you are burning ones. So if he's the cornerstone and you are seated in the cornerstone, it means you take on the reflection and the image and the character and the nature of the cornerstone. So you are multiplying the cornerstone where you go. That is, you are building block of the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. Go and read Revelation. The new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, because it um, consists of a body, of a company of people. It's not what we do. Go to Jerusalem all with these wedding gowns and nonsense and running in the streets. We brides. You are a building block. You are a living stone, a fiery burning one with at the throne. So I can only be there if the light of God started coming into my bones and I become a fiery burning one. That is where it can only be when Luke 10 verse 27 is part of your life that you stepped and became that scripture of love with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and all your mind, that everything is surrendered to him as first love. Then you become this fiery burning one. Then you become the living stone. What happens now? Now we've got scrolls. So Jesus comes to us and he says in Jeremiah, we've read it 1 verse 5 and it is, before you were in the mother's womb, I knew you. I chose you. I set you apart. I've called you. The key now is where you need to know, where do you come from? You see, most of us live out of an earthly dimension. Where do you come from? You come from heaven. You were there before the foundations of the world. You were a witness of creation. Everything was revealed because God knew when he created man, I'm sending him back to earth to go and help me bring a new earth and a new heaven. I knew you. So you need to know where do I come from? What is my, um, what is my mandate? And you need to realize my existence is from being a spiritual being. What is a spiritual being? Just think about it in the natural. A spiritual being can walk through walls, come through the windows without breaking the glass. A spiritual being travels to many dimensions within seconds. And do you see yourself like that? Do you realize it? Because you need to, you, we need to start thinking what the word says and what God says who you are. Because we live in the natural world. This is in the blink of an eye of your existence. We got caught up in earthly and worldly structures and not what God said. So when I came to earth, when you got born, born from above. You came to earth when you came. Ephesians 1, it says that God revealed to you your purpose and your calling before the foundations of the earth. So you came into agreement with it. You discussed it with God. What is my calling? And if I said I knew you, it means I've been in relationship with you. So you came out of heaven to earth out of a relationship with God. That's why he calls you his best friend. Out of a relationship. So why do we have this religion systems and things that I first got to go to my room and I've got to repent for 10 minutes and then I've got to speak in tongues for another 10 and then I'm going to try and enter the Holy of Holies. But you come out of a relationship where nothing is hidden. Okay. Let's take it a bit scientific as well. 
Science has proven where the egg of a woman and the sperm of man comes together, when you got formed, when your soul got formed, when your body got formed, there was a flash of light. Mm -hmm. It means energy was released. God is a energy system. We have to put it that way. So if God's an energy system, what are you? Exactly. So you are bringing transformation and changing things all the time. You are releasing energy. Energy forms things. Bring things together. Attract things. So you are energy system. Okay. At the Ark of the Covenant, you've got the two cherubims. Where the wings comes together, it is known that there's a flash of light and lightning coming out. The same what happens when the herb and the sperm and the ovaries becomes the cherubims. What happens when that light, flash of light comes? It is where the light, the light of God comes into you. And it gives you full access to all dimensions of the spirit. The windows, the doors, and the gates of heaven gets opened up above you as you are released into the womb of the mother. Mm. Then already, as a small being, you've got full access to heaven. You see, we think of it as a small thing, but that thing, that small thing's already got a spirit man. That's immaturity. So if Lord says, I knew you before the foundations of the earth, how old are you? <laughs> you can't tell me how old you are because when did, when was the foundations of the earth there? Not even scientists can prove it. How long before the foundations of the earth that he knew you already? Okay, let's carry on. So what happened now? The doors, the windows were open, and you got entry into the kingdom realm from out of the womb. You have access into the kingdom realm from out of the womb. And God comes through and becomes your light on the mercy seat. He reunites you in the womb on the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Now the spiritual realm, realm opens up and activates the realm of eternity. You see what we are living? We're living in the earthly realm. That's what we've taken on. Instead of knowing, I come out of a realm of eternity I'm seated in eternity, so I've been called for eternity. My being is an eternal being. You are an eternal being. So out of the realm of eternity, there is pure light. It's impossible to have any defiled light in the realm of eternity with Christ, because in him is the fullness in his light of the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So when you got saved and reborn, you were taken out of the light of the world, which are created light. Mm -hmm. You became created light. When you entered into the womb, you entered into created light. Mm -hmm. So what does God come? He comes and takes you into his pure light which is creative light and too many of us are functioning and operating on what was the creative light mm -hmm. but he gave you the ability he said partner with me you need to participate with me in creating so what happens you came from heaven to earth with the fullness and a complete record of the testimony on the earth and the testimony of heaven. So what happens? Of course, didn't the word say, we need to bring heaven to earth. So what happens? The testimony of heaven comes with you in the spiritual being into your fleshly 
being here on the earth. So you've got a record of the earthly and the heavenly dimension. So you need to bring it back into glory. You need to reunite it. So the higher power, your creative light, overshadows your earthly scroll and bring us back into a heavenly dimension. So you're born out of creative light into darkness, created light, to bring light again. Mm -hmm. So you're overshadowing created light and you bring it back into the truth of creative light. Now, why do we as Christians battle so much? How many people go for deliverance, go for counseling, and, and I listen to the silly things they permanently into warfare? That's a state of immaturity. Permanent warfare, there's something wrong with you. Firstly, you're not an in intimacy. Secondly, you don't believe and trust God. What you engage you in power. Exactly what the devil wants. You're busy in warfare all the time. You're empowering darkness. He keeps you busy and you miss the glory of God. When the mother and father seed came together, your earthly testimony got activated. Your earthly scroll. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks of his heart, so he is. We all know that. What happens when your earthly scroll gets activated? Yes, the, yes, the key. Your mother's got a scroll. Your father's got a scroll. They get put together. It comes into you. What your parents thought of you is the record and the testimony of yourselves. Mm -hmm. What your parents have spoken upon you, you take on that character, that nature, and that, that personality. How many times have you heard, you are just like your father, or you're just like your mother? What happened on? We live out of a scroll that does not belong to us. We live out of our earthly scroll, out of our father's scroll, and our mother's scroll, which is against our true identity of our heavenly scroll. What happens? If you work against your true character and nature, you in battle for the rest of your life because you want to overcome. You're immediately going to have a lifestyle of, of, of trying to overcome. You're going to move into religions and systems and steps one to ten. So what happens? I need to step out into the realm of eternity. Knowledge of what to do on earth. Being Yahweh's image. Being the character and the nature of Yahweh. Stepping into my heavenly scroll that was the, what that was agreed to by God. Remember, God said, everybody is unique. There's something unique in you. You've got your own character, your own nature, your own fingerprints, everything. So if I step and I combine myself with somebody else's scroll, I went against my nature. And I put myself in bondage. You shut down the eternal realm because your life is actually a lie. Okay. How, how does that happen? Because we have so many times, and in life, if you look at people, and I'm going to give you examples, and some of you that I can see on the screens are sitting in the same position. So many times, we are living from the outside in. How do you respond? Where do you learn? What do you do? Is of a knowledge and everything that we get from the outside. We take on what the world and what people say about us. We come in agreement of what the world thinks. We come into agreement with the lies of the world. Because we live from the outside in. That's not how you've been created. The fullness of Yahweh is in your inside. 
So what do we need to do? The revelation of Christ is from the inside out. The fullness of Christ is from the inside out. So many of you even there are just sitting there listening to teachings and doing books. Because can I tell you, you're not in the full relationship with God because God's on the inside out. Nothing are hidden of God. God talks clearly to everybody from the inside. We have not learned how to come into the inside, engage God from the inside out and get the revelation of all the scrolls inside of you to reveal it. That's what you've been called to do. Yes. And we ask ourselves, why is the church in so much chaos? Because every second person has got his own teaching, his own revelation, the same subject. So which one is the truth? And we've went in so much of our own imagination, especially in the mystical groups now. The teachings that are going on there is sick. It's so off against Christ, against creation, against what's in the word. But we take it for granted. Any person just speaks something and everybody is just yay and amen. So we need to live from the inside out. Another scroll functions now. The world, body, and soul one's control. When you live from the outside in, when you have aligned to the scrolls of your mother and father, you are under the scrolls of the earth. What happened? You involve your soul and your body are in conflict with Christ. Your soul and your body are in conflict with Christ and fight against Jesus. How do I overcome it, Etienne? What do I need to do? Obviously, you first repent. Secondly, I need to become a living sacrifice daily. Romans 12, we all know that. Living sacrifice. Lord, I give you my head. I give you my mind. I give you my thoughts. I give you my plans. I give you my eyes, my ears, my nose, my mouth. And I trade it for yours. I give you my hands and my feet. No more my works. No more my ways where I'm going to walk. Yours. I give you my heart that my mind can be yours as a man thinks of his heart. I give you my heart and I trade it for yours that perfect love can manifest through me. I give you my skin, clothe me with Jesus Christ, with truth, with light. That I'm not a wolf in sheep clothing anymore. What happens now? The full testimony of your of eternity get unveiled, unlocked, and they turn around and the eternity gets up. What has been shut down by us living out of an earthly realm and everything gets revealed out of heaven and it will manifest here on earth. So what happens? Your spirit man stands up in perfect light and light. So what happens? It, death, where's your sting? Yes. Death, where's your sting? What happens now? I am creative light again. So what happens? You've got the highest power. You've got the full capacity of what is in Yahweh. The full capacity that what is in Yahweh, of Jesus said to you, my fullness is in you. He did not say, I gave you a measure. My fullness. My fullness is in you. So every ability, God is almighty. So what, if, what out of what power do you function? Almighty power. His faith, his wisdom, everything about him, you function out. So what happens? You are above. You're above time, you're above space, you're above sound, you're above speed, you're above everything. You are almighty in everything. 
So where are you now? Immediately you are seated and you are yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing are you then? So you've got the ability to go to him before you were in the mother's womb, before the foundations of the earth. You have an ability to see in the next thousand decades. Genesis 1 verse 3, it said, let there be light. God spoke. That same ability is in you now. So may I ask you, what have you spoken into existence today? If you tell me you're living for God and the kingdom and you want to bring heaven to earth, surely you must have brought things into existence today. You tell me you're a lover of God, you're a lover of heaven. What did you do today? So out of your eternal realm comes creative life. So out of the womb, just move out of creative life into cre created life, into creative life. And your nature of the fallen measure of light gets removed. You're not in a fallen measure anymore. You see, we so believe and we keep on telling each other, you're a sinner. Did God say that? Did he say, you set free? You are holy, you are righteous. You see, we take on what the world says. 1 John 1 verse 5, God is light. We are out of the womb and the presence of God carrying the full record of light. You carry the full record of light. That is who you are. Where God is, there's no darkness. The, the word actually says there's no darkness in Christ. Are you in Christ? How can you be darkness? If a king's son, a prince, does something wrong, does that remove his title as a prince? So why do we remove ourselves? I'm still a prince. Why do we remove ourselves from what God says? You are the fragrance of God. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 15. What is fragrance? Fragrance is a vibration picked up by the hair in your nose. Scientifically. Fragrance is a vibration that I picked up from the hair in your nose. One of your spiritual senses is to smell God. So if you don't exercise your smelling to smell God, how can you be in fragrance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take it further. When Samuel anointed David, he took out the horn and anointed him. How do we anoint? Take out oil and slap it on and carry on and now you're holy. In the biblical times, the horns were ta taken, filled with oil. They put a plug of wax in it. That horn was then taken to whom God said. Not who they thought. God said with David. The brothers, it did not work. Samuel said, no, not this one, not this one, not this one, till he got to David and, and he wanted 
kept the held the horn above his head. What happens when you become the fragrance of God? It means your vibration, your sound that's in you melts the wax. The blood shoots out and the oil of anointing comes all over you. You've been brought into the frequency of heaven. That is anointing. Not what we are doing. I don't say stop anointing, carry on. It's got power. But that's the reality of what happens with fragrance. The oil comes out and it carries frequencies and vibrations from heaven. A fragrance activates a word. When you smell something, a word comes in your mouth like rose mm -hmm. or whatever, and that activates something inside of you. It activates a picture and it brings in association with you. Mm -hmm. And it triggers, normally, it triggers a memory. So what happens when we become the fragrance of God, we become attractive for God. What happens? He wants to dwell with you. And it all gets birthed out of your heart. Now, you're also the song of God. Isaiah 12, verse 2, Ephesians 5, verse 19, he talks about my song, my praise, my worship. According. So your song is what your DNA releases. Do you realize it's been measured? Your DNA releases a song. It's like a symphony that plays. You must listen to it. It's absolutely amazing. Your song is activated by the meditation and the thoughts of your heart, the positioning of your heart. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So your song will be according to your praise and worship. Mm -hmm. What sound do you release? Mm -hmm. And your intimacy with God. Your song brings everything of your existence into alignment with God. Because it's all about sound, frequency, and, and vibration. Your song can only be in unity with God if it comes out of a place as an offering. Do you offer, when you praise and worship, is it an offering unto God or is it a religious act? Does it come out of a place of surrender and awe and amazement where you come to and say, I give you my best self to my ability. I just want to glorify you. When the song of heaven takes place inside of you and your DNA, and the fragrance of God manifests, that means that everything in your heart, your body, your soul, your spirit, gets reformed and transformed to the same likeness of Yahweh. That's why praise and worship are so important. It keeps you in the holy of holies. So what happened now when my song comes into alignment, my fragrance comes to alignment, I move into the scroll, my destiny scroll of heaven, where God said, I must function and empowers me to overcome what you were designed to do. And when you come out of heaven, do you know what you have been designed to do? If you don't know that, you're not in your destiny scroll. You're still busy with the scroll of the earth. You're not busy with your heavenly scroll. You're busy with your earthly scroll. And that's when, when David said, an important thing is where David speaks in um, uh, Psalm 51, 11, let your spirit not depart from me. When we live in our eternal heavenly scroll, and not from the earthly dimension. It means that you're in full in the fullness in union with heaven, with the Father and everything. Your spirit will never depart. And that gives you the ability to bring the future into the now. 
Exactly like David did. What did David do? Old Testament prophet, pre cross era that he lived in, but he lived out of a post cross dimension, mm. eternal life. So, what does it do? It gives you the ability to bring the future into the now. So, how many prophecies have you got already? Why are not they not manifesting? You've got the ability to bring them into the now. Yes. To speak them into existence so that they can manifest. So the mysteries on our scroll gets revealed. When we step into that sound, that frequency, the vibration, and the likeness and the fragrance of God, it means your scrolls get enlightened. Nothing are hidden. That's what you function out of every day. And when you function, it means that you release the sound of heaven as a king and all of creation has to submit. Can bring no resistance. Impossible for creation to resist you when you walk in the fullness of Yahweh. It's absolute impossible. Now, how many scrolls have you got? Many. We've got a God that created over 5 trillion galaxies, and each galaxy has got a scroll. Each galaxy is a revelation and a dimension of Christ. So all those scrolls are inside of you. Did he not instruct you to rule? Over what? Everything. So he said nothing are hidden. You were given the scrolls. You were given the, all the scrolls and the mysteries and the secrets of creation of everything. So your scroll gives you the ability on a daily walk to live in the victory you'll see. Not to overcome, not to get victory. You are seated in victory. And that is why you need to ask yourself, what was, what did my scroll tell me to do today? And did you do it? Mm -hmm. Because every day, if you tell me you're a lover of God and a kingdom person, it means I need to administrate heaven on earth. I need to administrate my kingdom. Hebrews uh, 9 talks about there's inheritance, there's a testament. The testament comes into existence and function when the person has died. Jesus has died for you, the inheritance has been given. What is it? Everything. So you've got to scroll for everything. So what are you doing with it? You'll only take possession of it according to your love for God. The way that you walk, that you rule and reign is according to your love for God. Nothing else. Nothing else. You will get rewarded for what you are on your scroll. His will. Outworking, the outworking of your scroll, not good works. Come on. You're going to get rewarded how you play out your scroll and function and unity, not for your good works. We've come to churches now, and it's, what do we say? Oh, just love and be good. So we became a compromising body of Christ that's got no more truth, no more power. The church has lost its power all over the world because we started manifesting in works. Let's just accept everything and be good. But he says in the word, Matthew 7, 21, my family are those who do the will of my father. And Ephesians, he talks, he said, my family has got free access to my house. So if you function in your scroll, that's the will of the Father. You will have free access in his house, in his palace. You will rule and reign with him. Nowhere does it stand. Your good works 
makes you my family. Because good works, 99% of the time, comes out of your soul. It's to do with you. You want to pacify yourself and you want to embrace people. Yeah. That's a reality. That's a reality. And a lot of times we see it in the body of Christ. We see it in churches, especially those who pass the churches will see it. A lot of times to those, to those that you are good, they are the ones that stab you in the back. Because you did good works, you did not listen to what your scroll is, what the will of the Father is. You get it in churches. I, I discuss it at a conference this weekend with some people. They appoint all their family as the head of their church. Not to God said, their family and they get backstabbed and everything and hurt. Why? Because they try to be good. They appoint everybody of their friends. Get backstabbed because they try and be good. They try and help. God never told them to do it. What's going to happen? It's going to bite you. Mm -hmm. It, you lock yourself up, your scroll, your light, the doors and the gates of heaven shut down on you. Put yourself in bondage. God has revealed him to you. Or you in a mother's womb as he is in heaven. He wants to, you to know him beyond the earth as he is in heaven. Because that's the truth. Fulfill your scroll because that reveals pieces and destiny in your life. Make it your own. Make it your own it means take responsibility. Don't, don't come with the stories. I'm waiting on the Lord. We are, everybody is waiting on the Lord. God is not mute. He speaks each and every second. If you're son of God, you've got free access in heaven all the time. He speaks all the time. He does not ask you to make an appointment and say, come in a year's time, I'll tell you then. He's, you've got everything, you've got all the answers already inside of you. Read your Bible. The church has moved away from the Bible and we've come with all these excuses. Let me tell you, and the Jews used to believe it. We've rejected everything of the Jews because they believe the Messiah has not come yet. So we took everything and we threw it away. They've got so many mysteries and secrets and power to us and forth. I don't tell you to become a Jew now, please. We're not going to come under the law and religious. But there are so many keys and religion. You know, they believe that every word, and I believe it as well as the revelation I receive from heaven, from face to face of Jesus, every word, Every letter is a door. It's a pathway yes. of mysteries and secrets and revelation of God of eternity. So how do you read the Bible? Is by engaging those letters, engaging those words, meditating, access all the gates and the pathways, go and investigate, go and see, so that you can be a true king and a revelator of Jesus Christ here on earth. You see, we don't just read word to pacify ourselves. We read word to remind ourselves, to enlighten those scrolls and that knowledge and the understanding of God that's inside of us already. Live out of the revelation of our scrolls. Your scrolls are full of revelation. Everything, the revelation, firstly, of Jesus inside. Perfect revelation, fullness of him. The revelation of creation is inside of it. 
be witness of heaven. When we preach, when we in church, when we walk the street, whatever we do, are you a witness of heaven? And is it a desire of you? So when people look at you, they must encounter heaven. Do you realize that? You've got the ability that people will encounter heaven. Bring heaven to earth. So just live out what have you seen. You can only reveal where you live from and what you have seen. What you identify with. So we don't reveal heaven, it shows us it's a lack of intimacy. Let's carry on. You see what I believe? We don't really know who we are, where we come from, we don't live it. We live towards it to one day go to heaven. Instead of living out of that dimension that I am as it is in heaven. I am the fullness. I am, as God said, I am his character and his nature. I have his power and authority. I am a creator being. So we have the season of Acts 3 verse 6. Peter said, I don't give you gold and silver. I give you Jesus. Peter just told the man, lift up it and walk. So what happens when we are going to start revealing Jesus, your first love? That means that we're going to be surrounded by miracles, signs and wonders daily. 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 He's wonderful, counselor, mighty God. Who are you? Wonderful, counselor, mighty God. Ain't you the same characteristics? <laughs> Come on, we're not going to be religious anymore. And I know I'm offending some of you after what I said early on. Good for you. Go and sort it out with Jesus. No more time for religion in this place. Let's go to Luke 1. I'm going to walk with you through Luke 1. Verse 6. And they both were righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and requirements. Well, we're talking about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Walking blamelessly in all the commandments of God. So what do they do? They are obedient. Righteousness has been declared upon you. You just need to be obedient to it. You need to manifest it. Verse 11. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing in the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear took possession of him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your petition was heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you must call his name John. God is favorable. Your petition was heard. So what happens when we step into our character of obedience, of righteousness, it means that all your prayers get heard. Your petition gets heard. How many of your petitions have not been heard before? Because the question is, are you obedient as you step into your righteousness? A disobedient person, God cannot trust. So what is it? Petition has heard. You obey and you call name. John is God's favorable. What, what, what? You will bear fruit. God said you will go and bear fruit. Multiply. Fill the earth. But what is that? What will come out of your womb? God is. God declares prophetic just in that statement to talk to the angel. What you will release will be favorable. Yes. 
You see, when you read the Bible, one dimension you need to look deeper. That's when you start meditating, engaging those doors. When God starts speaking, said, What you release, what you bear fruit is favorable. Victory, that's favor, means you are seated in victory. And you shall have joy and exultant delight. And many will rejoice over his birth. So what does it mean? You release joy. Joy of the Lord, your strength. So you're releasing the overcoming, the victorious ability in everybody around you. That is what you are doing. And many will rejoice over his birth. It means that many will rejoice over the fruit that you bear, the seed that you are sowing. So what happened? I've got eternal effect on each and every person and all of creation. What happened? Many will rejoice. It means praise and worship comes into the earth and the earth gets full of glory. Do you see how it snowballs? It's not just, hey, I'm glad of of, of what you've done here. It means that all of creation comes into alignment and starts celebrating Jesus. That's your effect. And, and for he will be great and distinguished in the sight of the Lord. And he must drink no wine, no stream, strong drink, and they will be filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit, even in and from the mother's womb. He shall be of great, distinguished, and light in sight of the Lord. Controlled by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And at smallest form, God will be the controller of things. The seed that you bring, if it's out of your scroll, it will be controlled by the Spirit. Never the said will be controlled by you. Let's ask ourselves, wherever we go, is the manifestation of the people around us in delight and joy? Are we intentional? Are we intentional in doing it? And you will turn back and cause to return many of the sons of Israel to the Lord they God. Your seed will bring back God into the nations. And to the mothers out there and the fathers who's got children, if you step in righteousness and obedience, you can have exactly the same effect right now. That word is for you. Doesn't matter where your children are right now, that word you can stand on. Yes. Yeah. So why have we as parents become beggars for our children? Oh, Lord, please, I ask you to come and do this. Please, there is a please that. And we cry and we spend time on our faces crying and lying and everything. So you don't trust God. You don't believe what he said. God declared this upon you. And he will himself go. Go before him in the spirit and power of your light and turn back to the heart of the father to the children. God said he will go before. In the power of Allah, what did Elijah do? Elijah brought the fire from heaven. Elijah spoke things into existence. Elijah walked in obedience. Elijah walked in power. Why? Because he was obedient to God. Obedience commands a blessing of God. Obedience moves God. He has to come and confirm his word. He'll go ahead. Your seed will go ahead and turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient and incredulous and unpursuable to the wisdom of the upright. Listen to this. The disobedient and incredulous and unpursuable to the wisdom of the upright. He'll bring, you've got the ability just out of your righteousness and just out of your faith and belief and obedience to release that presence that your worst enemy, the satanic high priest, will be brought back into righteousness and wisdom of God. Not just wisdom, 
wisdom of God, just your presence, which is the knowledge and the holy love of the will of God, in order to make ready for the Lord a people perfectly prepared in spirit, adjusted and disposed and placed in the right moral state. God will go before you and your fruit will bring people back into the right moral state, the wisdom and the truth of Yahweh. Yes. Zechariah said to the angel, by what shall I know and be sure of this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel replied to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God, and I have been sent to talk to you and to bring to you the good news. I want you to listen carefully to what he said. We now in the new dispensation after the cross. So what should it be? For example, it should be, and Nancy replied, I am Nancy. I stand in the very presence of God, and I've been sent to talk to you and to bring you the good news. The revelation of Jesus. If you are seated in heaven. On the throne. In the holy of holies. As the Lord says. That means that you are in the presence of God. That your word is yay and amen. It's power, authority, creativity, rulership. Power. And that you are the revelation of Jesus. So what happens now? Let's say you go to the shop. That has how people are supposed to encounter us as sons of God. No, this girl, this guy, this whoever it is, stands in the presence of God. Because what they speak in a trace hits me like lightning. Brings transformation. Makes me aware of God. You see, that, that comes out of love. And that must be a daily walk each and every second. Your desire must be that every person sees the good news of Jesus. All the time. All the time. Now behold, you will be and will continue to be silent and not able to speak till the day when these things take place. Because you have not believed what I told you. But my words are of a kind which will be fulfilled at appointed and proper time. What is it? You will be mute. What happens? When we walk in unbelief, disobedience, we mute ourselves. You believe it. Your words and things then have got no power. You give the people no reason to believe it. When you are dis disobedient and we walk in unbelief, we shut down our voices, our power, our authority, our sound, our frequency, our vibration. Now the prophet kept waiting for Zechariah and they wondered at his delaying so long in a second. But when he did come out, he was unable to speak to them. And they clearly perceived they had seen a vision in the sanctuary and that he kept making signs to them. Still, he remained dumb. Your decisions, your actions, has got a consequence. Even if you repent, the consequence stays. What I always say, if I commit a murder, I repent, I'm forgiven. But I'm still going to jail. So unbelief, let us walk around the mountain, delays our acceleration in heaven and earth. And when his time of performing priestly functions was ended, he returned to his honor. Now, after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant, and for five months she secluded herself entirely, saying, I have hid myself. What happens? She was in such awe and amazement of the gift of bearing fruit for God that she shut her down five months. Five months. In grace. What is grace? Grace, Paul says, 
it is a privilege and honor that gave, gave, God gave us to represent him. She was so an ornament that she's going to birth fruit that's going to represent God. So when God said, I gave you everything, is exactly what happened to Elizabeth. Are you in a place of grace or amazement for the privilege and the honor of what he gave you will bear fruit to represent them? For five months, she secluded herself that she can be in a position to birth it out of creative light. In perfection, in the honor of God, she did not want to be defiled. Are we positioned in grace? Because a grace positioning is a daily position. Grace is what makes you praise and worship in spirit and truth. Thanksgiving. Now in the sixth month, listen to you, how God works. In the sixth month after the angel Gabriel was sent from God to town of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a girl never been had been married and a virgin engaged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, descendant of the house of David. And the virgin's name was, what, six months? The sixth number of man. That is what we are fighting against. We are fighting out, out of the earthly dimension, out of the earth, against the earthly nature of six, man. Earthly scrolls. That is what most people are doing. They're fighting their earthly scrolls. And he came to him and said, Hail, O favored one, endued, endued with grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed favored of God are you before all other women. When God gave his fullness in you, and he gave you the ability to birth things as it is in heaven, what did he declare for you? Hail, you favored one. Do you see yourself as the favored one? Do you see yourself as blessed? Hail you favored one. The Lord is with you. What is it? I will never separate myself from you. It's impossible. Covenant. That's a covenant. You are blessed, favored of God. Are you before? All other, before all other women. You are before all, all other people because all of us, although man is not got wounds, you all have hearts, you birth out of your heart. Blessed are you before all other people. Do people recognize that in you, that you are a blessed one? But when she saw him, she was great with trouble and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept revolving in her mind with such greeting might mean and the angel said to do not be afraid mary for you have been found because you have found grace free spontaneous absolute favor and loving kindness from god you see the fear of god comes when grace manifests when you encounter the goodness of it, the loving kindness of it his love his blessing that's when the fear of god comes not to be ridiculed and all that type of When love and everything manifests that you want to run, it happened with me the weekend at the conference. I wanted to run off the stage because in one moment, God started walking from out of the spirit to me that I wanted to run off the stage. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I was frozen. I just went. Hmm. At times in, in South America, America, Australia, that I ran off stage through the microphone where I ran away, trying to get away from God. Because of his goodness and his love. Right. That you feel you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid. Never. For you have found grace, kindness of God. And listen, you will become pregnant and you will give birth to a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. You and I will give birth great things as it is in heaven and it shall be recognized coming from Jesus. Mm -hmm.
He will be great, eminent, and he will be called the Son of God most humbly. And the Lord God will give him to the throne of his forefather, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. And of his reign, there will be no end. I want to tell you now, there's another declaration. There's another covenant. Out of your reign, there will be no end. Mm -hmm. Out of what you birth, your children even, there will be no end. It's a declaration, a blessing upon, I don't care where your children are right now, they're in the jails, if they are drug addicts, whatever they are, they are no end to the rule. If you and righteous and trust and believe and celebrate what God has said, it is done. Yes. Wow. And Mary said, to, how can this be since I have no intimacy with any man as a husband? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a shining cloud. And so the holy, pure, sinless thing offspring, which shall be born of you, will be called the Son of God. When you got saved and reborn, born from above, the Holy Spirit overshadowed you. And you became the womb of heaven, young man. the Son of God, the blessing of Yahweh. That is what you birth. It is about intimacy with Him. It's about union with Him. It's about walking with Him and the knowing awareness of God all the time. And listen you, Elizabeth, in an old age also conceived a son. And this is now the six months with her who is called barren. For with God, nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. I'm asking you today, do you believe what we've discussed so far? Do you believe the covenants of God? Do you believe nothing is impossible? When God says nothing, it means nothing. So let's just stir a bit of a religious spirit. And I'm not going to go into detail. Do you believe you can create an angel? Come on. Oh, look the fire upon the edge now. <laughs> Do you believe you can create an angel? Huh? If God said nothing is impossible, what's nothing? Nothing. All I want to say, you create nothing unless God told you to do it. Don't think you can create angels now and go and run and create your own army. <laughs> but you see how we think. I'm just throwing things out there. If God says nothing is impossible, so you can create an angel then. It's just going to be God needs to breathe in it to have life. Nothing is impossible. Do you believe it? Nothing is impossible. You see, the way we look into situation is it through that nothing is impossible, I or the I from the earth, from the natural. You all doctrine students, so we need to be stirred. We need to get rid of our religion because you need to go out there and destroy this religion, spirit, religious spirit here on the earth. You are your knowledge as doctors, it means you've got God has given you a ability, authority, and a power that's got influence. Then Mary said, Behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. And the anger left her. What did she say? I take ownership of what you said. I acknowledge it. I align myself with that word. I will manifest it. She never said, I'm waiting on the Lord, what we normally do. She aligned herself, she acknowledged it, she received it, she accepted it, let it be done. And at that time, Mary arose and went with faith to the hill country, to a town of Judah, and she went to the house 
sons of Zechariah and Adrian saluted Elizabeth. Aha. When last did you salute the house or a shop? What does saluted mean? Salute means I'm coming in and I release the blessing of God upon the house, on creation. So what does blessing mean? I release the fullness of the power and the provision of heaven into that person or that house. So that should be a natural thing in you when you enter people's houses, businesses, places you go, is to release the presence of God, is allowing God, you're opening up the gateways, the doors of heaven to manifest in that place. You bring honor, yes. firstly honor to God and then to the house. Yes. And it occurred that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby lived in the womb. And Elizabeth was full of joy and controlled by the Holy Spirit. When did she go? In the sixth month. Why? What did Mary do? She went in the sixth month to release the Holy Spirit that Elizabeth and John can step into seven in perfection. She reunited. She gave John and Elizabeth power and victory over six the nature of man yes oh. mm -hmm. what happened and occurred that when delivered where the baby lived in her womb and elizabeth was filled and controlled by the holy spirit what happened to john got that come I want you to think now carefully. Mary, Holy Spirit, angel said, overshadowed her. She received the Spirit to give birth. You and I got saved, reborn, overshadowed by the Spirit. So, what is the effect of us moving around in town in the shops supposed to be like? We are instruments of baptism. Yes. We've got the power and the authority to release God into people. You are the carrier with the greatest gifts of all the Holy Spirit. And we've been given the authority to release them into people. Mm. And there was a say, and, and, and Elizabeth was controlled by the Spirit. Not just a touch of God. She released her in the fullness of the dimension which we all desire. Holy Spirit control me. As so in John 5, where Jesus said, I can do nothing of my own accord. You see the ability we've got by just walking into a place, we can take somebody from a sinner, from not being saved, into somebody that becomes John 5. I can do nothing in my own accord. I'm controlled by the Holy Spirit. But you need to be intentional. That is what I believe in this time and season in this year is going to happen. We're going to walk the earth like that. There's no more delay, no more time to play Jesus and be a Christian or be holy or to try and be just play church. It's about the sons of God walking on the earth in the same dimension and measure that Mary had. Do you believe it? cried out of a loud voice and cried and then exclaimed, blessed favored of God, above all other women are you, and blessed favored of God, the fruit of your womb. What is that? Immediately, it opened the eyes of Elizabeth. She saw what Mary was carrying, and that is what we need to happen, that all of creation, all other people will look at us, and their eyes will be opened when we walk in the see the glory that's upon you, what we are carrying with whom we are walking, and they'll declare the name of Jesus. That they'll declare to you, blessed are you, favorite one, and the fruit you bear in your womb of God. 
And how have I deserved that this honor should be granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? People should say, I can't believe that favor that the Son of God comes and speaks to me, enters my shop, enters my house, walked with me on the streets. Do you see yourself as a favored one? You see, everything you need to go and sit and meditate and believe, this is who I am. And not only when you go into your room or your study area to have a quiet time of God, it's a permanent habitation and walk. It's all according to your love. For behold, the instant the sound of a salutation reached my ears, the babe my womb leap for joy. What happened? John became a powerhouse. The joy of our Lord is strength. He became a victorious person, immediately seated in victory in heaven. That's why God would tell him, you go and prepare the way. Yes. You can baptize me. And blessed, happy to envy it, is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment Fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her from the Lord. Mary believed. Do you believe? Yes. Do you believe? And come with and say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe everything Jesus said about you? Do you believe what Mary did? You can do. Do you believe nothing is impossible? Do you believe you are the character, you are the revelation, you are the image and nature of Yahweh? Do you believe nothing is hidden? Do you believe his fullness is inside of you? Do you believe that he has chosen you, set you apart, that you are a king and a priest, that everything belongs to you? Do you believe you can dwell, dwell and walk to him? Do you believe you can reveal him? Do you believe? If you believe, this year will be a pillar in your life that will stand out like never before. This will be probably the greatest foundational year ever in history for the sons of God. It is your choice. Don't wait on anybody else. Make your choice. How are you going to reveal God? It's in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth is as it is in heaven. So be that kingdom person that reveals heaven, that brings the jealousy of God back to the earth, that desire, the passion, the fire of Yahweh. And it will be eternal, eternal move.